the first questions. What is for you the first experience on One Young World when you was the first time on One Young World? How you did you self experience One Young World in your journey in the last 10, 15 years? I always uh, eager to go back to one, one, one Young World. First time was the excitement of seeing what it is. Then uh, every time I try to uh, uh, come back uh, because I feel recharged. Uh, the, my battery is recharged because of the uh, meeting all the young people of the world together. It's a one young world, the whole world. This is fantastic thing. Every single country is represented in this community of one young world. So I don't want to miss that because I feel suddenly full of energy to doing things uh, which I was not doing before. So this, this time I missed out because I'm not in the uh, group uh, meeting with all these young people, but I'm very happy to see them on the screen at least. Uh, so that's my first thing. And I continue to uh, come back and again and again to One Young World. I was uh, keeping the record that I was the one who right from the beginning until uh, that time I'm present uh, in the One Young World. Never missed anyone. But unfortunately, I have to miss this one. Oh. A couple of weeks ago, you did a, an online speech with us about imagination, how important imagination is for the young people. May you share a little bit about the power of imagination for the young people before we go to the three zero world. So what means imagination? How you would explain it? Well, first of all, the important thing about imagination is uh, human beings are excited about hoping for things to do, the dreaming of things. The dream part is imagination. It's not real. It's not, it doesn't exist. But I want to see that happen. That's why we make all the fairy tales, we all the stories that the childhood stories, children love that stories, because it's not real. The, the princes and the prince and the horses and all the exciting things that happen in the fairy tales. And then we started moving, getting into other stories. And then I have the science fictions or another storytelling, but again, total imagination, but it excites us because that's what human beings wants, want to do things which was not done before. And we are full of energy to design those kind of things and feel so good that why not? Why not have that? So we, we, when we get uh, uh, upset about something, we say, oh, oh, we want to do something else. And so imagination begins. So imagination is the core of everything that we do. Uh, if you don't have the imagination, it doesn't happen. If you imagine, funny thing is, it will happen. It, at the moment when you imagine, you think hey, it's so funny, it's not, it's so far distant, it's not going to happen. But imagine it, and you step by step, you come closer to clo closer to it and make it happen. It becomes reality. All the realities that we have begin with imagination. And the interesting thing, imagination doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't cost you money, it doesn't cost you time, you take your money, mind into it, and you keep on designing things in your mind, come, uh, imagining things in your mind, and gradually it captures you. And you, you want to get it done in reality. That's what happens. If you imagine, it will happen. If you don't imagine, it will never happen. And the power between imagination and creativity. So how you see the source of creativity into for the transformation? What's creativity means for you, Professor Yunus? Imagination and creativity is an ingredient always human being carried with them, right from the beginning of human being, millions of years back. And that's what drove human being to step by step to do the things which was never done before, never thought anybody could do that, and gradually came to the conclusion, nothing is impossible for human being. That's what drives human being. It believes that nothing is impossible for human being. All you have to do, imagine it. All you have to do, pursue it. And if you pursue it, if you can continue to stay on the path, it will happen. Because you imagined it. Imagination is the power. That's what it got into the uh, path that we have. We want to, to go to the moon. 
and finally went to the moon. So the creativity is the ingredient, is the substantive thing that you put into your imagination to make it happen. So that's the step that you take by your creativity. You, you fail this way, you fail that way, you cannot find the path, you find another path. You never gave up on your uh, uh, struggle to find the path to get it happen. It's a puzzle, complete puzzle that you created in imagination, but it's so, such a complicated, intricate puzzle that you try this way, you try this way, and finally found, it, found something. That is a creative. Creativity is the road you build to find the solution. Yeah. Human uh, being is full of that creativity. It's a, it's a bundle of creativity. But we don't use that creativity. Unfortunately, our system is such, it's not, en creativity is not encouraged. Creativity is a kind of uh, put into your uh, system, but never un uh, unpack that one. You have, our job is to unpack the creativity that you have. Every, every human being is packed with endless creativity. Um, it's a, it's a f creativity which has uh, no limit. Our life journey is about unleashing that creativity, discovering that creativity, each one of us. Each one of us has unlimited creativity. Uh, uh, just because you're born in a, a privileged uh, family or you're born on the street, doesn't matter. It's full of creativity, same creativity that uh, anybody could have. It's a, it's a, nobody is uh, deprived from that creativity. Our job is to unleash that creativity. One creativity leads to another creativity. That's how we keep on moving. Thank you. So, you have now time in these days with One Young World. Now you are part of a super global community. One Young World is so bold now. So after these four days, you are really connected and you can go out with your creativity. And Professor Yunus um, are giving you now the idea of a world of three zeros. I can tell you, whatever you do, do it with joy, as hard life is. But once in a day, feel yourself, breathe in, breathe out, and enjoy yourself and do it with joy. Thanks a lot and enjoy, Professor Yunus. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Hans. I was, I was uh, making promises repeatedly to Kate and David that I would surely come and guarantee that I'm coming to come. I put it in my calendar that I'm going to come. Suddenly, I had to drop that. I'm terribly, terribly sorry that I'm not there with you. And I feel so bad that uh, I'm not enjoying the company of all of you coming from all over the world and sharing with you all the excitement that we are going through in the work that we do and how to make things happen. And that's why we just discussed the question of uh, imagination. It's a fun thing for imagination. Imagination is something which takes us in a different direction, the direction that we want. What were, what, what are we here for in this planet? Uh, we have to imagine our purpose, our goal, our path. And this is, this is what the age is all about. At your young, youth age, uh, you are the one looking for your uh, life path, which direction you want to go. So he, we, we start with little things. Uh, we imagine big things, but I always encourage everybody to start with little things because little steps is the one which will take us to ultimate destination million miles away. If you don't take that first step, you can't get to the million miles, which we are imagining to get done and it can get done. And the second part I would like to mention along with the imagination, you are the luckiest generation of the history. Yes, you are. You are the luckiest generation of the history. You are the most powerful generation of the history because you are empowered with enormous capacity of technology. The technology each one of you have is not technology the whole community or the whole society or the whole world has. It's each one of you, the technology that you have is enough to change the world. And that technology will continue to expand and you will expand that technology, make these things easier. So always you take the steps to make things easier. So you take the first step and then take the next step, your ability to do it easier, better comes back. And then you want to continue in this path, finally achieve the goal, reach the destination that you have defined for yourself. So we talk about all the problems of the world and we try to do things, how to improve that like the 
uh, environment is a terrible situation right now that uh, our house is burning and we are literally having a celebration inside our house, ignoring that that house itself is burning. So I said, that's the kind of uh, uh, urgency that we missed out completely. We are so busy with little things in our life that we forget the bigger things that is happening around us. If it is a real burning, if you really feel that our house is burning, which I do feel that, if you also feel the same thing, that our house is burning, the first responsibility is to get out of the house and stop the fire and then go back and enjoy your life. But today we are so busy with enjoying life rather than stopping the fire that we have. So we are saying that, that we somehow created a civilization uh, which is taking us to a suicidal path. Uh, this civilization has uh, something terribly, terribly wrong involved in that. Civilization has achieved lots of great things. I'm not denying that. But it also has this ingredient of ignoring things and putting us into a path uh, which is a self-destructive path. We are destroying ourselves as we take more and more steps. So first thing that I would say is in the imagination part, I say, why don't we create a new civilization? This civilization is going to end sooner or later because that's a suicidal path. Uh, so that there's a self-destruction working its way to the final point that it will destroy itself. So before it destroys itself and along with the destruction of the uh, civilization, we destroy ourselves. We don't exist anymore in this planet. So why don't we, while we have time, design a new civilization and shift into that new civilization? Before this ship sinks, we have to build a new ship so that we can trans transfer to the new ship and go the direction that we always wanted to go, always wanted to, always imagined them to go. So that's the Im important thing that uh, uh, we want to set for ourselves, creating a new civilization. And what would the ingredient, what would be the description of uh, that civilization, what the content of that civilization. That I try to put uh, in a simple way because of the, all the messy problems that we have created in the present civilization, we take them, uh, something that turned into zero for the new civilization. So I came up with the three zeros, I identified three zeros. Zero net carbon emission because we want to save our environment, save our planet. We don't continue, we cannot continue the way we are. So zero net carbon emission, zero wealth concentration, and zero unemployment. These are the three zeros that we want to accomplish in order to create a new world, in order to create a new civilization. And then we have the technology, we have the methodology, how to get, get it done. We talk about social business, we talk about entrepreneurship. All human beings are entrepreneurs. All civilization taught us to get jobs. I said, job is the wrong idea. Real thing is to get into uh, entrepreneurship. So I talk about entrepreneurship and create all the entrepreneurship. That's my work, all the things that I do. Encourage everybody to become entrepreneur rather than become a job seeker. Uh, so human beings are not job seekers, human beings are entrepreneurs. That's the methodology by, we, by which we achieve those three zeros. Three zero. In order to achieve the three zeros, we make it simpler for everybody, particularly for the young people to take it, those tiny steps encourage everybody to create three zero clubs. Three zero clubs is consisted of five young people, like any five person can uh, form a three, uh, uh, three zero club. All it needs five young person and your friends can get together, boys and girls, whoever you interested within the age limit of 12 and 35. Uh, and we encourage them to do, do that. Once you form that club, uh, the task that you assign yourself that uh, each one committing that I will not contribute to global warming. I'll not do anything which will ex expedite the global warming or continue the global warming. So I don't use fossil fuel, I don't use plastic, et cetera, et cetera, which you know. And as a person, as a young person, I start with me, that I'm not the contributor to this. I will be free from contributing to global warming. And I can, be, I can do that, so all these small steps and gradually I'll achieve that. And I will not contribute to wealth concentration. And I'll be free from wealth concentration. I'll be free from gen contributing to unemployment. And I can do that, how to make sure that I do not contribute to wealth concentration. So these are the three things that we want to uh, achieve. Uh, and then we become a three zero person because I'm now free from all these things to go. And the three zero person continued. And then uh, we, we 
encourage uh, with you as a three zero person as a three zero club to start with the simple thing with the zero waste. I do not contribute to any any waste. I do not use plastic. I do not do, uh, throw away things. Uh, I want to have a, a, a recycle everything. Uh, I refuse. I reuse. I uh, uh, redesign, repurpose, and I recycle. That's a, taking small steps. And people, young people, love that. That I because we unless we control that waste. Uh, will be uh, drowned with their waste, and will be, this will be uh, we will be under the uh, garbage uh, and finish our life under the garbage because it's piling up around us. So we start with three zeros, and at the end, then three zero and the zero waste, and then we talk about in, uh, taking a link the zero uh, food insecurity. We don't want because it comes from the poverty and uh, short of food grain and so on. We have to ensure it's a zero food insecurity and zero waste. These are the things, issues that we want to continue with and create a new uh, civilization by doing the, achieving that. And we can do that. Already uh, more than 1,500 within a year, within a more than 1,500 uh, three zero clubs have been formed all over the world, very different countries. So we invite you, all of you, uh, to check it out in our uh, in your website uh, to find out how to create a three zero club and connect with yourself. You are the one who will create the new civilization. Older generation is not able to do that. They are got used to the old, old civilization. So new generation, your generation, has to create this new civilization where it will be a world of three zeros. We will not have the global warming. We will not have the world concentration. We will not have the unemployment because of the artificial intelligence, which is coming in a sharp way, quick way to remove us from every world and we become garbage on this planet. We don't want to do that. So that is the scope that we have. I wanted to uh, communicate this uh, uh, with you in Belfast, but unfortunately I couldn't be with you, but today I got this opportunity to talk to you at, at least. And thank you, Kate, and thank you, David, for giving me this opportunity. And thank you all, all of you. Thank you. Wish you all the luck.